today I'm going to uh, show you how to install an NVMe drive into the Western Digital D50 game dock. The reason I'm doing this is I recently switched from a PC to a Mac. I didn't want to pay the Apple tax on storage, especially for my photo library. I need a fast drive so that when I'm in Lightroom and I'm browsing through a thousand shots to find the ones to mark for editing, I can go through them very quickly. Originally, what I did was I purchased this external Thunderbolt drive case and put my existing Seagate Fire CUDA 520 two terabyte drive into it. It's worked fine so far. However, something I, I noticed that I really don't like is even when my computer's idle and I'm, I'm not going through my photo library or anything else, the surface of this gets above 90 degrees Fahrenheit, which doesn't feel right. I, I don't think that that's a great thing. And, it's surprising because this, this is an aluminum enclosure. So I really don't think that's acceptable. I don't know why that's happening. If I go ahead and open this up, if I can remember how to open it. There we go. Yeah. So you can see it does have a thermal pad. Uh, it, it does come with a thermal pad, which is supposed to make contact with the top of the case and it feels like it does and in fact I can see an outline the the shade of the aluminum uh, I can I can see where the thermal pad is making contact with it however apparently that's 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 not doing the job uh, because both sides of the case both the top and bottom are reaching 90 degrees Fahrenheit even when my computer is at idle so I wanted to find a new Thunderbolt uh, enclosure, preferably one with a fan, which you know has its downsides. It has a little bit of noise. It has some bulk, uh, but for for this purpose, size and uh, noise are a little less important to me than protecting the drive that my photo library is on. So I went searching and I could not find a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 enclosure with a fan. The only enclosures I could find with fans are USB-C 3.2 or lower enclosures, which isn't enough because the Fire CUDA 520 is PCIe 4. It has 5,000 megabit transfer speeds, which is already almost double what Thunderbolt provides, and it's like five times what USB provide. So I definitely don't go, want to go with a USB enclosure. I want a Thunderbolt enclosure and I want one with a fan. So the only thing I could find was this Western Digital D50 game dock. This is sold uh, with three storage options, with a two terabyte storage option, a one terabyte storage option, or no storage at all. I didn't want to buy one of the ones with storage pre-installed, mainly because I don't need to pay 300 extra dollars for another two terabyte drive when I already have one. They also don't list what drive is put in here. So I, I can't judge the, the, the quality, the longevity, uh, make sure that my, my data is on a drive I can trust to go in here. That's not to say it would be, it's definitely bad. It's that I don't know because they do not provide the information at all. So I took a gamble and hoped that they wouldn't be soldering the storage directly onto the PCB inside of here. That for cost concerns, since they're offering a zero terabyte option, my guess is that it is just a NVMe M.2 enclosure. And I would be able to just buy the zero terabyte option and implant it. This enclosure also has some other benefits, whereas my existing enclosure uses one of the Thunderbolt ports on my Mac and existing uh, Thunderbolt dock, um, which is currently fully saturated. 100% of my Thunderbolt ports are, are uh, in use right now. But this, um, since the drive will be in here, that then will connect this also acts as dock. It's not just a storage enclosure. So here's the Thunderbolt port that'll go to the Mac Mini. 
and it has a pass-through Thunderbolt port. So I'm already plus one. I'm already gaining a Thunderbolt port versus my current solution. Uh, in addition, it has a couple of USB-A's, a USB-C, and on the front, another USB-A and USB-C. Getting two additional USB-C ports and three additional USB-A ports is not nothing. By switching uh, enclosures, I get an extra Thunderbolt port, two extra USB-C ports, and three extra USB-A ports. In addition, as you can see here, this has a fan. So it has a chance to, the, I, I'm, I'm expecting it will be able to keep my drive cooler than the current enclosure. Because this is so large, I was guessing that this, I, I took a guess that this has room for a NVMe heatsink in it, uh, in it. And so I picked one up. So I figure having an actual real heat sink with copper heat pipes plus a fan, what will allow this enclosure to keep this drive below the 90 degrees Fahrenheit that it's currently experiencing at idle. Before I went and bought this, I tried to figure out in advance whether or not this was even possible to do. Unfortunately, all the reviews and all, no one talks about opening it up. No one has done a teardown of it that I can find uh, on YouTube. No one has taken pictures of the inside to let me see if, if indeed there is. Uh, an M.2 slot available for me to populate, or whether Western Digital is actually uh, soldering storage onto the PCB itself. So that's why I'm making this video, because no one else has done it, and I find this useful, and I think, you know, there might be people with existing storage who don't want to spend the extra to get an unknown storage, and this way you can see for yourself what's inside here and see uh, that, in fact, this is possible to do on your own. First things first, let's open this up. Now, this has screws uh, to open it up on both the front and back. However, there is nothing really uh, on the back. The back of the PCB is almost flush with the back of this case. There's really nothing in there to see, so you don't need to worry about opening up the back. You only need to open up the front. So. I have here my iFixit kit. The correct driver to use is this one, which is, I think, listed as the 5.5 hex. Now, when unscrewing this, you want to be very careful because these screw heads are extremely shallow. So obviously they did not expect this to be user serviceable. And so these, these screw heads are extremely shallow, which means they are very easy to strip. Just make sure to press directly down and do not skimp on the force. You have to keep the, the driver head in, this, in the very shallow socket when pulling these out. My magnetic tray so I don't lose those screws because there is no way I'll be able to find replacements for them. Ah, that one got away. There we go. So with the screws out, I now take the, I think this is called a spudger, and very carefully, so there's uh, in between this metal plate and the plastic rim, at the t you're going to want to insert it at the top up here and very, right in the center, and very carefully work your way in, there we go, and then pop this up. Now. Um, I think there's glue, there's a glue strip, like a weak glue strip uh, on one of these sides. So open it gently, but uh, don't be afraid of, um, don't, you don't need to be too afraid of resistance you encounter. There we go. Yeah, I, I think the glue strip's on the bottom. There it is, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's the glue strip, it's attached to the bottom. So that's, that's the side that's gonna hold in. 
Okay, so let's set the cover aside. Um, so luckily I found out that yes, indeed, there is right there, there's the M.2 slot. So we will be able to transplant our drive into it. So first I'm going to, now that I know I can do it, first I'm gonna prepare by attaching the drive to the heat sink that I bought. Okay, so let's pull this up. I think this is, yeah, that has a plastic coating, so we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, so here's the tray. Okay. So let me get my drive out. I'm going to remove this existing thermal tape. Probably not reusable, but I'll just leave it there for convenience. Let me ground myself. Yeah, this enclosure, um, this enclosure, instead of holding it down with the real screw, has these like rubber, um, uh, rubber push pins uh, that that hold it into the socket. So another thing I'm not wild about. I prefer to it use an actual screw. So there we go. There's the Barracuda 520. on here. So since it looks like this uh, heat sink has thermal tape both beneath and above the drive, I'm actually going to go ahead and remove the product sticker from here. So that the thermal tape can directly touch the mem memory chips. There we go. Okay. So this is saying if my drive uh, was single-sided, uh, I would uh, add a second layer of thermal tape, I guess to make it thick enough. Um, but this is dual-sided, uh, as you can see. So I'm not going to add that additional thermal tape. I'm just going to take the plastic coating off of this one. Okay, um, before I put this in, let me make sure I know which way up, which way is up uh, in the game dock. So in the game dock, the short key, uh, so in the game dock, the short key is over here. So this is how it will align. So this side uh, with the silver chip uh, is the side that should go up, that should be facing up in the heat sink. And I have to align it. So here is a screw hole. So I have to align it with that. go. So it's making contact. Yeah, feels like it. So yeah, the second layer of tape of thermal tape isn't necessary. And uh, it's pretty well aligned on the screw hole. Okay, so now um, there, are the, there are two sides to the, 
top of the heat sink, one with three, uh, three inline pipes, one where one of the heat pipes is inset. That's to allow uh, the screw to go in. So again, this side should align with the screw hole. So I'm going to take the plastic film off the thermal tape. And then, um, and also these have screw holes on the side to hold the top of the heat sink into the tray. So I'm just going to align those and press down. And that is a good fit right there. Okay, and they included a screwdriver uh, with the heat sink. So I'll just go ahead and pop that out. And let's pull the screws out. These are really dug into the packing cardboard. So first screw. Not tightening it all the way. Second screw, yep. flip side, And uh, something to notice is they give you five screws. One is for inserting uh, the drive into, uh, attaching the drive to the board. Um, the thing to notice is that four of them have flat heads. Those are to assemble the heat sink, the four flat ones. And then this one here has the, you know, the motherboard screw bump on it. So it's got a little dome on it. So just make sure to save that one for actually attaching the drive. The four flat ones are for the heat sink. screw number four and this time I will tighten it down and tighten down the other three there we go and that's a nice little package I like that they use copper heat pipes for this. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Time to install this in the game dock. And uh, yeah, earlier I, I, I did check this and the heat sink uh, does fit in here. So I was right. The bulk of the device uh, does take it, uh, does give it room for a real heat sink to go on your SSD. See, there we go, sliding it in. Uh, I don't know if 
we can, there we go, it's seated fully in there. And now I just have to screw it down. So get a fifth screw out of this. Uh, this screwdriver is not magnetic, so I'm going to switch to my iFixit screwdriver. And where's the Phillips? There we go. Because this is magnetic, and otherwise, wait a minute. I thought this was magnetic. Yeah, it is. Okay. Otherwise, uh, just because of the shape of the enclosure, um, if you don't have a, if you don't have a magnetic driver head, um, it's going to be impossible to actually get the screw in here properly. Nope. Press down. Is it not catching? It's seated. Okay. It appears that the screw they gave me is too narrow. Uh, too narrow for the screw hole in this PCB. So I'm going to go check for uh, my... I'm going to go look through my spare parts, see if I have a screw that fits this. So. Just to make testing easier, I'm going to pull the drive back out. For now, uh, it'll be easier for me to check screws against this without the drive in the way. Let's get a larger. Phillips. Look at that. First one I try. That is what working at a uh, compute local computer store in high school will do for you. Get to recognize screws by sight. So drive back in, it's seated in the key, I'll also let this, let this be a lesson, never throw away your extra screws, always keep them around, and keep your computer screws away from your regular home improvement screws, uh, I'm going to get a larger head. Keep your computer screws away from your regular home improvement screws just because computer screws tend to have standard sizes and shapes. And it'll be much easier to find the screw you need if it's not mixed in with general hardware store screws. Before I 
you know okay that feels seated uh, that feels seated correctly so let's go ahead and put the face plate back on so again first I'm going to make sure this little glue strip is relatively flat where it's supposed to be and then That fit feels good. Let's pull these up. Oop. My screw tray. My this is a uh, magnetic screw tray, by the way. Always very useful. For making sure you don't lose screws while something is opened up. Again, I'm being very careful not to over screw it because I don't because again these screw heads are very shallow and it's going to be extremely easy to strip the screws so uh, and in fact I should not have tightened that down uh, as the first screw going in but oh well we'll live with that I'm not too worried about alignment on this just because the plate itself is fitted into a groove uh, on the plastic rim. So I'm not super concerned about screwing one screw down all the way first. But Best practices are best practices for a reason. Um, I also don't need to screw these down very tight because again, this is what they're holding in like this this plate is very light it's going to be upright anyway it's going to be standing on its side like this so i'm not worried about you know forces pulling it out so uh, i would recommend when screwing this face plate back on don't don't screw in too hard it's it's not necessary just make sure the screws won't wiggle themselves out um, and that'll be enough force okay and uh, that's it uh, so that does it my I don't know what I'm going to do with this old enclosure I guess I'll keep it around as a backup uh, if for some reason you know I happen to have a spare m.2 drive uh, that needs a home I can toss it in here maybe make this like portable storage um, that's that's the one thing this has over this is it's it's incredibly small so I guess I, I guess I can you know I'll, I'll wait and see if a, uh, a, a cheap M.2 drive goes on sale and I'll just toss it in here for portable storage for like when I go on vacation or something, just ha have a uh, backup drive with me. Uh, that's nice and small and uh, Thunderbolt 4 speeds. Okay, so uh, that's it. If you have any questions about uh, how I did this, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, hopefully this is useful to, you know, at least three other people out there on the internet. So have a good one. Bye.